people who don't want to get involved in politics because they say politics is divisive kuno. They usually say that they would rather remain neutral. And I hear that very often even from some people working in the church or even people involved in various ministries of the church as volunteers. Usually, sasabihin nila, they prefer to see the church promoting unity. And so, they say they would rather remain non-partisan. They also insist that we should just be quiet during elections and we should just respect people's choices and prerogatives that we should just allow people to vote according to conscience. Obvious naman yun eh. But they forget that they have the duty also to inform and educate the conscience. I wonder how you felt while listening to our gospel reading today. The kind of image that we get of Jesus is not you know, the typical caricatured redeemer who is suffering silently and who remains meek and mild, gentle and humble of heart. What I see rather in today's gospel is quite the opposite. Ibang klaseng Jesus. A Jesus who is bold and challenging, calling on his disciples to make a categorical stand for the kingdom of God. Si St. Ignatius of Loyola, he calls life in this world as a constant spiritual battle. A battle with two standard bearers. Those who bear the standard of Satan and those who carry the standard of Christ. Take note. Hindi ito labanan ng mga tao because as Christians, we never treat a fellow human being like an enemy even when we disagree with them. Even when we're disunited or divided on issues. Kapwa tao pa rin natin yan. Well, the real fight is between good and evil. And we know that even good people even the best among us can be put under the spell of evil. And you don't love a person kung mali na siya, eh sinasangayunan mo pa rin. To love that person is to say, no, I don't agree with you. But to say it respectfully, I don't agree with you, you are wrong. And so Jesus says, I have come to light the fire on earth and how I wish it were already ablaze. And this reminds me of the book of Wisdom, chapter 3, that is speaking about the souls of the just as gold that is tested in the fire. Ang ginto na nasusubok sa apoy. Kaya meron tayong expression, baptism by fire. Kasi, ang ginto, kailangan talagang tunawin sa apoy. In order to be cleansed of its impurities, para tumingkad at tumaas ang kilatis niya bilang ginto. Sa ating responsorial psalm, if you listen carefully, the psalm, and by the way, ito yung pinakaunang salmo. Psalm number 1. It is using a different image for division. Remember, the Lord says He didn't come to bring peace, but division. No, actually, He came to bring peace, but first we face division. The Tagadog terms that I get, you know, are pagtatahip at pagsasala. Yung sala, may impit sa lalamunan. Pagsasala, salain mo. 
that is applying more to the strainer. Like what we do when we want to separate the pulp from the juice. Mahirap nga namang inumin yung juice na may pulp. Nakakabubulunan ka. Separate. On the other hand, you have the image of the pagtatahip. You know, it comes closer to the idea of the winnowing fan that is spoken about in Psalm number one. May mga painting si Fernando Amorsolo of countryside scenes. And we see women pounding like that, pounding the rice. And the other women, may dalang bilao. And there is rice in the bilao. They throw the rice into the air like that in order to separate the chaff from the grain. Yung ipa doon sa bigas. Division. You call that division. It is the image of division. The grains fall into the bilao because they are heavy. And the chaff, the ipa, that is driven away by the wind because it is empty. It contains nothing but empty shells. You know, people who are undiscerning, they tend to be easily driven by the wind of public opinion. The fact that they can get easily carried by yung mga nagbabiral na posts, na nagtitrending sa social media, na akala nila'y totoo kasi trending. Actually, they betray their intellectual emptiness and spiritual emptiness. Parang ipa. Hindi sa bilao na nahuhulog, kundi sa lupa. Sometimes there are people, yung tipong manonood ng live streaming, and they find themselves being carried kasi ang daming lumalabas na angry face, angry face, angry face, pulang-pula, mga mura, verbal harassment, and before they know it, sila din nagdadagdag na ng angry face at mga mura. And I find it horrific. It's even horrific pag nakilala mo yung iba. Na alam mo. Mga dissenting tao to. What are they doing? I find it horrific. You know, what they are able to say. Even when the person who's talking is a very good and very principled candidate. Pero dahil hindi popular, abay siya yung tipong babalnatan ng angry faces at mga barrage of curses. And many of the people, yung nagpapadala. Nagpapadala. Many of them are young people and they don't realize that they're allowing themselves to be manipulated Yung bang hindi alam na namamanipulate sila ng mga trolls na bayaran. Alam nyo bang ang isang troll pwede siyang mag-maintain ng isang libong account na fake? Na wala namang ibang trabaho kundi magpalaganap ng fake news at pambubuli sa mga hindi nila kasundo sa politika. What for? to influence public opinion. These armies of trolls are paid precisely to propagate lies and false propaganda so that what they propagate becomes the alternative truth or the alternative narrative. Pera-pera lang yan. You know, I like the way Ambassador Tita de Villa put it. The other day, I was watching television and I was glued to the news report. Kasi in-interview siya sa TV at the launching ng Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting sa Diocese of Passing. She was commenting on the campaign against disinformation na bahagi din pala ito ng trabaho ng PPCRV. 
And listen to what she said. Sabi ni Ambassador de Villa. I'm sure she's following this mass right now. Thank you for that comment, Ambassador. Sabi niya, PPCRV is nonpartisan, but never neutral. One cannot be neutral when it comes to good versus evil. We try to prevent voters, she said, from being co-opted by evil, fake news, lies, corruption, and kill, kill, kill. Salamat ho, Ambassador. Over good and evil, over truth and lies, you will have to expect division. Bakit ako makikiisa sa kasinungalingan? Kasalanan yun sa Diyos. Unity is not to be mistaken for uniformity. It is precisely when we work for genuine unity that we are bound to deal with a lot of resistance, a lot of conflicts, and a lot of tensions and divisions. I remember a comment that really made me cringe and made me rethink the idea of unity. It came from a group of young boys. Isang grupo ng mga kabataan who had been charged of raping a girl and killing her. And one of these boys was interviewed by a news reporter. Sabi ng news reporter, Bakit niyo nagawa yun? Ang sabi pa naman nitong binatang rapist, uh, Ma'am, pakikisama lang naman po sa barkada. Kinilabutan ako when I heard that. Pakikisama. Wow. Siguro we have to make a distinction between pakikisama at pakikisama. Iba yung may impit sa lalamunan, pakikisama. Ang pakikisama ay pakikisama sa mabuti, hindi pakikisama sa masama. How can you glorify unity if it is unity around an evil purpose? Hindi ba? Nasa Bible yan, in the story of the Tower of, the Tower of Babel. Sabi, before people used to be united. They used to speak a common language, one language lang daw. But they began to embark on building a tower that would reach the heavens. Gusto mag Diyosan. Anong ginawa ng Diyos sa kanila? He divided them. Their division is positive. That curse of Babel would not be reversed until the day of Pentecost. Until the coming of the Holy Spirit, at ang Espiritu Santo lang mga magtuturo sa atin to learn to enter into genuine dialogue with one another, to learn to confront our divisions head on, hindi ang tinatalikuran, if we want to work for genuine unity. You see, some people have a wrong notion of unity. Some people do not realize that working for peace cannot be separated from working for justice. That forgiveness and reconciliation cannot be genuine without a humble admission of guilt, repentance, and a sense of accountability. There is no such thing as neutrality in the earthly battle between good and evil.